Hey guys, uh, Brett Kelly here, Air and D engineer at 45 Drives. Um, I'm going to show you a quick video today on how to rebuild a failed redundant boot drive. Uh, now, the majority of our customers when they buy a Stornator will get their boot drives mirrored so that if one goes down, uh, you'll have very minimal downtime and all your data will be safe. So this doesn't happen that often, but you can never be too sure, especially when you've got important data, right? So. Um, I'm just going to do a quick video here to show you what a failure looks like and how to rebuild it. Alright, so here we are in our CentOS box and first I'm going to open up the disk utility. Now the disk utility is literally what it sounds like. The disk utility is a nice little program that lists all the disks attached to your system. So um, first you can see, here's our first boot drive, 500 gigabyte Western Digital, and here's another one. And you can see they're both RAID components, and if you go click to go to array, so there's our main RAID partition and then the swap partition. And it's running and everything, so everything's working great. Alright, so now I'm going to simulate a failure by simply just pulling out one of the boot drives. So now it'll take a minute for the computer to recognize it. It'll show up as degraded now, which means it's missing a drive. It says, hey, there's supposed to be a RAID here, but I don't have enough drives to run it. So we'll hop back into the disk utility. Scroll down. And as you can see, one of our disks is now missing because I pulled it out. And if you look at the RAID, boom, degraded. So, fixing this is relatively simple, with the first step being, turn off your computer. So, I'm going to turn off my computer and put my replacement boot drive in. Um, one very important note is you have to keep your replacement boot drive the exact same size as the one you're replacing. So, I'm going to run shutdown H now, and I'm going to swap the boot drive out. Alright, so I've got my replacement disc. Um, it is the literally the exact same model as the one I'm replacing. The model doesn't really matter. All you have to make sure is the capacity is the same. It's better safe than sorry. Just use the same model, same capacity. So, I'm not going to put it back in the boot bracket just for demonstration purposes. But it's as simple as just plugging your new boot drive in. And when you turn on your disk utility, and when you turn on your system and look at your disk utility, it'll appear just like the other one did. So now that I plug that in, I'm gonna fire it back up. All right, so we've put our replacement boot drive in, uh, in place of the failed one, and we turned the machine back on. And we'll now go into our disk utility to um, see if it shows up. And there it is. So there's the one we're running off the the active redundant boot drive. And here's our replacement. You can see it's empty. It's got nothing on it. Um, these are still degraded, as you expect they would. We haven't reattached the drive. So, the steps here are we are going to make an exact copy of the partitions off the live disk, copy it onto the new one, and then take those and reattach them together. This is pretty much the gist of what we'll be doing here. So, to do this, you're going to want to first check the status of your current raids by typing cat slash proc slash md stat you'll see md0 and md1 they'll be missing a u here meaning degraded as in it's there's two devices in the raid but it can only find one so like i said we have to copy the partitions right so we're going to take the, this partition and this partition and we're going to make an exact copy on this device. So we're going to go from SDAA to SDAB. To do that, we open this and we type sfdisk-d, the device that you want to copy from, SDAA in this case, sfdisk, pipe sfdisk to the device you want to copy to. Now you got to be careful with SF, sfdisk, however. Um, what this command will do is take everything from the first disk and copy it onto the, part or the partition scheme from the first disk and copy it onto the second. So if there's something on the second disk already, it will be wiped. So if you mix up your two letters by accident, it'll just create two blank disks and then you'll really, so just be very careful that you get those right. 
It's the first disk that you want to copy from to the second disk you want to copy to. So we'll run this command. And it finishes. And we'll go back into our disk utility. And boom, you can see two identical partitions. Still degraded, but now we're ready to reattach. Reattaching is very simple. MDADM dash dash manage. The device you want to manage. Actually, you know what? We'll list the status again. Just, just so we can be sure which is which. So, we're going to want to work on MD0 first. So, the active device in MD0 is SDAA1. So, its pair will be SDAB1. So, to add that, you go MDADM manage dev slash MD0, the first device, dash dash add the device you want to add to it, which in this case is AB1, because it pairs with AA1. It'll do some work. MDADM added. So there, that one's added. And then we'll do that with the second one. Actually, first I'll show you what happens. So if you go to the first one, and now you can see that it's recovering. The second one still hasn't because we haven't reattached the swap space yet. So to do that, take the second device, and you put the second half of the partition, SDAB2. Because here, this is this is the act of SDAA2, so you put SDAB2 with it. And there, MDADM added. So if you go look, and that one started its recovery as well. So that's it. Now that your boot drives are reattached, you can watch the rebuild process, which watch cat proc MD stat. And every two seconds it'll just update. But you can see here that to do the first partition, it's going to take about 150 minutes. And then once this one's done, it'll rebuild the second. And uh, when these are completed, their resync, you'll have your redundant boot drives back in working order. Alright, so here is the watch command we ran earlier, and you can see our uh, redundant boot drives are now redundant again. They have both used, meaning both drives are present, and it says it is active. And we'll verify that in the disk utility. Here you can see RAID, RAID 1 running, RAID 0 running. So there you go. Your drives are safe and sound yet again. So that was a quick video on how to rebuild your redundant boot drives now this is not to say that your drive will fail it's just nice added protection in case it does and if you have to go through this process please just remember the three big things are your drive has to be the exact same capacity as the replacement drive um, you got to turn the machine off while you switch it because it'll screw up the naming if you don't and three when you're copying the partition to your new device using SF disk just be careful as in if you put the wrong device you can screw some things up don't worry though, it's not very hard to get it right. Um, any more information you need, fully detailed walkthrough, everything you saw in this video is uh, founded on our, on our wiki page. Uh, thanks guys.